It does control the boat. Steer it. Something seems to be missing here. Check out these ruts. That's a boat that's been sitting a while, right? We're gonna put the boat in the water today. I hope anyway. Last year I didn't get it in at all. The way that the rains hit at our timing of schedule and everything it just didn't work out. And this year we just got an announcement a couple of days ago. We can actually walk to our slip now. They've had so much water on the lake and it's a dam controlled lake and they can't let it out when we have lots of rains because that floods the areas down below it. So we finally can put this old girl in the water. So this is Willow, the Whispering Willow. Uh, my boat, sailboat. I'll clean it and then I'll show you what it looks like after she's all cleaned up. So it's been sitting for two years. I caught a mouse in here earlier, put a trap in last night and it is completely full of wasp. Which anyone who lives in our kind of climate knows that's kind of, there's one flying around me right now. You've been evicted. You come around here, you're going to get juiced with some raid. So the mice have been busy. Chewed up my toilet paper. Building some nest material. So it has a little uh, toilet. They call this a head when it's in a boat. It has a freshwater tank that goes down here. Underneath there is uh, positive flotation. So it's all filled with foam up in that front bunk area. The V berth is what they call that. The It has a side, a bed on each side, or a, a berth on each side. Probably have to shine a light back there for you to see back there, but that's where the gas tank goes. And then there's an access panel down there and the boat motor hooks back right behind that. Little stove and sink. And then there's another berth that goes back here. We just kind of use it for storage for life jackets and whatnot. So I hope that wiring is not hanging down because the mice have chewed it, because that's gonna really make me angry. So there's LED lighting all along, uh, right up in here, all up underneath that piece of trim. And I made the upholstery, I did the upholstery in this. And then under here, move some of this garbage out of the way, is our little stove. And this is a uh, home strand mariner. And notice, the mud divers have even built a nest down in my stove. It's an alcohol stove. And this little thing here just tabs up there. So you have a cook surface. Cute little, uh, cute little boat. The uh, faucet over there works just like a Volkswagen camper bus. It's by uh, mechanical action. So this light does work. And then back where normally you would keep your anchor, that is all backlit. And it says Willow back there. So it looks pretty cool when it's all lit up. But it's a mess right now. I can't believe I'm actually showing this, but it's an absolute disaster. Your icebox down here, I don't have the original icebox, but I do have a cooler down there. There's a table. Uh, that's it right there. Right there. And there's a pole that goes into the floor right here. We didn't have the original pole. So I'll show you what we did to make it work. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that. Took a piece of uh, PVC and we tapered tapered the end there. And then that just drops in right there. And then there is one on the table. Drops in as well. So the only thing I really don't have in this boat that would, would have been original is the icebox. I put this panel in. Nothing like cutting a hole in a boat when you've never owned a sailboat before. So it went well. And then there's just a little cubby under here for dishes and whatnot. And we'll have to clean all that out. But And there's one down here as well for tools. 
Oh, and my boat has one feature that probably not any other sailboat has. I have a fire pit. Because what's the best thing about camping? The campfire. So this runs off a little propane stove tank. And these are heat shield, aluminum heat shields that go around the fiberglass. And it is vented and gapped with a fan so that the gas tank sits right behind, obviously right behind the, uh, the fire pit. That's kind of dangerous, right? So that's all vented out. And then I always make sure the boat is open for a couple hours before that's ever lit. Pretty cool. So you basically can just sit back on the one side, kick that open and put your feet up, enjoy the campfire. But it needs treated again. You can see uh, this side here of the teak versus this side. So I've got some work to do on it, but I'm gonna clean it up uh, today and go ahead and get it in the water. So let me get busy. Check this out. So I've got a mud dabber nest built there and then a big old sucker can't see it very well, but built right there on the side of that. They're just relentless out here. Unbelievable little buggers. I'll show you up under here, up under this V-berth. It's just full of foam. And it doesn't appear that anything has been down in there. So, and I bagged a few pieces of it in mesh bags so that when I want to take it out the next time, I don't have to take it out piece by piece. So that is the front of the boat. Kind of all wiped down. This uh, flashing or this guard right here is for my fire pit. It's the backsplash part of my fire pit. We just store it under there. Okay, so let me get to sweeping out some mud. So on those side berths, the battery goes in this one. Everything's labeled and pulled down there. The hole uh, has the solar charger running out. And under here is just storage of parts and random assortment of things you might need on a boat. Hose clamps and that kind of thing. Uh, I did do something that isn't real common on the older boats. I put uh, cigarette, char cigarette lighters to use for chargers for phones and things. There's one there and there's one down on that side as well. So that one will reach for a phone up in the V-berth. And then this one serves uh, for the main cabin area to keep things charged. There is Wi-Fi, believe it or not, on the on the slips on the docks. So yeah, wipe that down. I'll put that those cushions back in there after I've put the battery in. Go ahead and get it hooked up. You remember that battery? I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link, uh, a repeat link of it right here. I found a marine battery full charged on the side of the road just a couple weeks ago. Well, it's been a couple months ago now, but uh, we're gonna use that one because it's charged. So we'll put it in there. Those things weigh about 50 pounds, so it's going to be a, a beast getting it up here. So we're going to put it up here, get everything hooked up, and put this side, clean it up, and put it back together. So everything is labeled positive and negative, and what it goes to, starboard cigarette lighter, yada yada. This one's a bilge pump. And then when I take the battery out every year, because I'm probably going to forget, I zip tie everything that goes under one terminal together and so that way I know what goes where it looks like a big mess but I don't have to remember where anything goes because it's all zip tied together so all of those are negatives they're gonna go on the negative side of my battery makes it a lot easier now that we have the battery in we got lights let there be light I'll put the gas can back there get that all ready to go I keep a little vintage VIN motor here back in the back just a little bitty 12 volt trolling motor. It's small enough to carry and if we did get in a bind it'd probably get us back to a shoreline. It's either that or you know get a spoon or a paddle or something get yourself to shore. So that's all rigged up and ready to go. There's a piece of paper towel. I always stick a piece of paper towel right when I first load it because it'll leak for a little bit and then it kind of seats itself and it'll be fine. So by the time we get to the lake after we've hauled it there I'll be able to take that out. That looks a little better.
the noise you hear is the you know, solar fan up there running. Cleaned the toilet out. Put the coverlets back in here. It's funny how hot it is in here right now, but how cool it is of an evening if you stay on it. That area all cleaned up. Back here is all cleaned up. So, uh, this is our anchor rope and all of that. Table fits nicely, tucks right in there. Cooler floor still a little dirty. I'm not going to clean it completely till we get there. These are the uh, cockpit cushions and they have foam in them so they can be used as flotation devices. That's why they have to have straps on them. Um, you're supposed to have one on the deck to throw out to somebody, life preserver. So we use our seat cushions as flotation devices. There's a paddle over there too so that if we were to get out and not have power to get back, we've got power. Or we've got that, manpower. And then I cleaned the stove out. Got it all cleaned off. It doesn't look too clean, but it is. And that's the original type stove that was in here. I managed to find one at a garage sale after looking for one for a while. And we have water. The, uh, we put antifreeze so it's kind of pink. We put our antifreeze in it so we need to push all that through, but it does have water. 95 degrees in here, or almost. I'm pretty happy with how clean that is. All of that stuff in that seat there will go on the boat at some point. So now we're just gonna clean the back cockpit area. We are good. That's where our water tank is, there behind the willow lettering. I don't know if you'll be able to see the uh, anchor light or not, but I'll go ahead and turn that on here in just a second. The sun is kind of killing it. But at night, it has an orange light behind it, and it lights up and says, Willow. So, can't really use it as an anchor point because I put a fan, another one of those uh, ba uh, solar fans behind there. So, I can't use it as an anchor point anymore, so I had to cover it somehow. These are little solar fans we're running. You can have the air come in or go out. They have little lights built in, so they have like a blue light built in. And uh, they work really well. They just go on the outside and there's a little solar pack out there. So that is the boat, the sailboat. Let's get that mess back there cleaned up. I almost forgot to show you to, to show you one of the coolest features. Trifold door blocks off the uh, front V-berth. Can't really see it very well. Such a tiny boat. I'll try and open it from the other side so you can see it. Maybe you can see it from there. I'll show what it looks like closed. Tiny, tiny boat. This is a 22 foot a day. A day 22. Shut that light off and clean the outside. Yeah, we got old Willow all spit shine. I can't claim that I did all of it on this one. I had a lot of help. Erin helped me out a ton. So she looks pretty good. Not as good as it did the first year. I redid it, but not too bad. This boat's a 1972. There's a couple areas in the cockpit here that I need to kind of touch up, but all in all, cleaned up pretty nice. I broke, uh, we had a pretty bad windstorm, we had a tarp on it, and there is a stanchion arm that comes out, holds the standing rigging out, 
and it's just threaded rod and it sheared one of them off. So I'm having to go in there and make one of those. But other than that, ready to go into the water, I think. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I put a vent on the back of here too. I put those those uh, solar fans up front. So I've got one right there and then one in the, at the bow of the boat. And then I put a vent back here and that just has a piece of mesh screen behind it. So bugs and things can't get in, but that has worked out really well. This boat had no ventilation at all and it would just get condensated just from sitting on the water. The humidity in our area is pretty bad, so it's just nice to be able to let it air out. She's pretty shiny. Looking pretty good there, Willow. The only thing I didn't get done is I usually use like a crud cutter or something and kind of cut this, all this brown off of there, but really won't matter. Anything below, if you know boating, you know, anything below the white line right here, you're not going to see. That is the water line, and so you won't see that. So, all this garbage under here you won't see. The keel on mine is a stationary keel. It's a 660 pound lead ballast. And I have a pretty shallow uh, draft in this thing, probably about three feet. Remember what the exact measurement is, but you can't creek sail in it, but you don't have to have very much water. So that is Willow, and I'll try to take you along for part of the journey when we're heading to the water, and maybe we can go for a sail this week. All right, got those mass spreaders back in place. Got the standing rigging run back through. It's kind of hard to see. There's one that goes through up on the mast, and then one that goes through out here. And that is all back in. I need to do something with those cables because we can't run down the highway like that. But I think we're about ready to hit it and get it. And birds have built a nest in the bottom of the mast. So they're gonna be evicted. Gee, Manitli. All right, the mast is hooked da. to the gin pole. Da. Da, da. Shooting right in the sun, of course. Da, 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 and da, da. There's a winch down here. Da. And Aaron's da. gonna crank the winch. Da. I have I have the lead line. Dalton has the loud mouth. And we're ready to crank her up. Yeah. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna make sure my cables aren't gonna get back here. Yeah. That looks good. We got the gin pole attached. So I'm bringing it down, bringing that. I'm gonna bring it down! All right, come over here and crank for me. Well, I'll have to get you down then, won't I? I'm stuck. You're stuck. Get yourself in the head. Keep cranking. Got a long ways to go. Gin pull? Gin pull? What is it? Gin pull. It's a gin pull. We're all set up, ready to put her in the water. But first, we have to go down and put some dock lines on. Mommy, did you forget what we're doing? What are we doing? Taking the ropes down to the dock line. Taking the ropes down to the docks, right? Yeah. Let's move it or lose it. You're putting in a dock line. You twist the rope when you loop it over so that this one will rub against this one. And your hope is that it won't back off. So if you do that a couple times, it's usually keeps the line tighter. We're on the ride around to the lake. Here we go. Riding around. I can smell smoke. Yeah, it does kind of smell smoky, doesn't it? I think it's car exhaust or boat exhaust. It might be boat exhaust. Got our life jackets on. We're good to go. Where does Daddy go? Daddy's going to be driving the truck. Where? He's going to back us into the lake. We're going to hope and pray the motor starts because I haven't started it yet. This is my famous trick. 
we just wing and prayer it, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to actually leave the sailing association, which is back that way, to launch at the boat ramp. We gotta stay clear of the trees because all of our rigging is up. You get a bug in your eye? No. Air. Air. Oh, okay. So she so she out. Oh, this is where the ramp is. So it's just right next door, but. This is where we have to put it down in the water. Starts every time. In engines. Oh, you do? Are you driving? Yes. Look at you. You know what this is called? What? A tiller. And it controls the rudder, which is that great big white thing in the ground or in the water. It does control the boat. Steer it a little bit and see which way it goes. Turn it just real slowly. Oh, we're going out that way. Now turn it back the other way. Now we're going this way. See? Now there's a buoy up there. See like those tiny waves? See? They can make more by ourselves. We're sailing real good. If only there was smell of it. Nothing like a two-cycle engine. Well, oh, Willow is in the water. All in a day's work. The tinkling sounds of the sailing marina. Dalton calls my mermaids angels. He said, Mama, don't smash your angels. Well, we're gonna leave her for the night. Catch you guys when we go for a sale. <laughs>